Hey guys, Rafi here from the Endgame Investor, and the IMF is scared out of its mind for what is going to happen to the banking system. They have released a concluding statement for Article 4 or something or other that shows that they are actually very worried about what is coming down the pike for the financial system in tones that are much more negative than they were in 2007 or even on June 2008 on the eve of the great financial crisis. When the IMF is worried, you should be worried too or not worried depending on whether you have real money or not. But if the elite of the elite criminal banksters are worried about what is coming, it's a good indicator that something wicked this way comes, at least for them, if not for us, as long as we are sufficiently protected with rational decision-making. We're going to go to the 2023 section for a conclusion of something, and then we're going to go back in time to the 2007 conclusion of the same thing, and the 2008 one, and the 2009 one, and each of those three years looks stupider than the one before it. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself! <laughs> These are the intellectual bodyguards of the central bankers of the world that basically just slice our pizza into smaller and smaller slices so that we each get a smaller slice. And then they say they have increased productivity by increasing the amount of slices. We could call it Pizzagate. The conclusion you should come to is that the people that are in charge of the monetary system have no idea what they're doing, no idea what they're talking about. They are a bunch of poorly trained cheerleaders that don't know how to spell or use their pom-poms. This video on the IMF is brought to you by... Samantha, I need to know that you understand that I have a couple of eye holes. Eye holes, get them today. For realsies now, it's brought to you by... MCF Energy, symbol MCFNF. This is a new natural gas company based in Europe with projects in Germany and Austria. The relations between Europe and Russia have pretty much gone south. Russia will not be supplying Europe with natural gas anytime soon, and Europe is in the midst of an energy crisis. It just happened to be that this winter was somewhat mild, which kept things together by spitballing, but it's not like Europe's natural gas problem has been solved by any means. And anyone involved in the gold space or the energy space will be familiar with at least a few of these names. The co-founder is Ford Nicholson, who is the co-founder of three companies that were acquired in 2006 and two in 2016, one for $2.6 billion, the second Bankers Petroleum for $575 million, and the third nation's energy acquired for $1.6 billion in 2006. Investors in gold stocks will be familiar with Frank Justra, founder and former CEO of Lionsgate Entertainment, the producer behind Blade Runner 2049, and the founder of Wheaton River Minerals that was acquired by Gold Corp that was acquired by Newmont. So if you own Newmont and you own Gold Corp, then you were familiar with Frank Justra. And also we have the uh, director, Wesley Clark, who the former Supreme Allied Commander of NATO, which is not exactly why I'm a fan of him, but he did help expose the lies of the deep state. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So for those of you that have a speculative portfolio reserved for explorers, I think this one should be on your list. Doesn't mean it's definitely going to succeed, but the people involved and their track record gives a good enough shot. The stock is at an all-time low right now. I think it's about 20 cents. Here it says 25 cents. But stocks like these that do advertise, which is why they are sponsoring this video, they do tend to spike when those advertisements get out. And so it is a good time to get in on the low end of the spectrum, which is pretty much at an all-time low. So if you are into speculating on energy companies, this one is a decent one to put a few dollars in to see if it works out. There's no guarantee, but the business plan and the people involved make this a better exploration stock to speculate on than others, in my opinion. So let's begin with the 2023 statement of something or other that I don't remember, but I'll read it when I see it right now. United States of America, staff concluding statement of the 2023 Article 4 mission. This is the most important mission of all the articles 
And of all the articles that they have, Article 4 is like a really big one or something. I don't really know what it means, nor do I care. But this is like good comedy, so I'll cover it now. The U.S. economy has proven resilient in the face of significant tightening of both fiscal and monetary policy that took place in 2022. Let's take a look at that sentence, shall we? Significant fiscal and monetary tightening that took place since 2022. Well, okay. So monetary tightening, let's look at the money supply. Monetary tightening, we have here the money supply from 2013 to today, a 10-year chart of the money supply in the United States of America. Uh, and here I drew a trend line, this black little line, right? This uh, is the trend line where we would be had we been on the same general monetary policy from 2013 to 2020. Uh, continuing that trend line out to here results in something along the lines of $17.5 trillion. This is billions of dollars over here. We're at somewhere between 16 and 18. I'm estimating $17.5 trillion, give or take a few hundred billion dollars. So what's $100 billion between friends? It's not much when you're talking about big globalist money printing organizations. And we are now at a money supply of $20.6266 trillion. Yes, granted, we have tightened, tightened in quotation marks from 2022 when we were at about $22 trillion. And yes, that is significant tightening relative to the insane printing that we had done from 2020 and 2021. Uh, now we're on our way down. Yes, this is tightening. And yeah, it is significant tightening, but... Why is the U.S. economy so resilient in these terms, or at least in relative terms? Well, we're still about $3 trillion more than we would have been had we conducted the same monetary policy that we had conducted. Who am I saying we? The Fed, whatever. The money printers. If they had conducted the same monetary policy that they were conducting from 2013 until 2020. So there's still a lot of overhang there, about $3 trillion of monetary overhang. So it's not surprising that things haven't exactly collapsed yet, but oh, believe me, they're on their way. Let's continue with the international monetary fraud. Now this paragraph is great. We're going to translate it after I read it. Rising wages for lower income workers, rapid unemployment growth, and pandemic-related government transfers made important inroads into reducing poverty in 2021. Yeah, when you transfer trillions of dollars to uh, lower middle class people, it'll make them less poor. That's that's true. Most notably, the share of the population living in poverty fell markedly from 11.8% in 2019 to 7.8% in 2021. Yeah, after the hell of 2020 and locking them all in their houses. But yeah, that's just a minor point. The poverty rate for Black and Hispanic households fell by almost twice as much as the national average. Close to half of this impoverished improvement, sorry, oh, that's Freudian. Close to half of this improvement came from fewer children living in poverty. This is great. I love these parentheses. Mostly due to the economic impact payments and the fully refundable child tax credit. What does that mean? The economic impact payment? Well, we gave these people a bunch of money for doing nothing in 2020 and 2021 because we didn't allow them to do anything because we were on lockdown. So we gave them money and now, oh, look at that. They're richer. This is amazing. We should keep doing this. But then the international monetary fraud admits this much. Unfortunately, says the IMF, these impressive gains in tackling poverty appear to have been largely unwound in 2022 as pandemic benefits expired. Here, the IMF continues to say that higher interest rates will be required for longer, not addressing the possibility that it could collapse the entire banking system. Near, important near-term risks, says the IMF, the resilience of the economy and the robustness of labor markets are good news. However, it is possible that the large and rapid increase in interest rates that has already been put in place may not be sufficient to expeditiously bring inflation back to target. And then skipping down to here, this creates a material risk that the Federal Reserve will have to raise the policy rate by significantly more than is currently expected to return inflation to 2%. The IMF here actually does seem worried about the banking situation. And this, to me, looks like its most negative Article 4 concluding statement that it's made in years. It's much more negative than the 2007, 2008, even 2009 concluding statement from Article 4, whatever Article 4 is. And this seems to me to be a real warning sign that the IMF is very scared of a calamity happening sooner rather than later. Let's read this paragraph. This is the key sentence here that shows that they are actually worried that something serious could be brewing here. The longer that higher interest rates persist, 
the greater the likelihood that such fractures will be revealed in the treasury market it's talking about. Recent failures of large non-internationally active banks, which have so far only had a modest effect on credit conditions, could potentially be a prelude to more serious and ingrained systemic financial stability problems. So basically, the IMF is saying congratulations to the U.S. government for mitigating poverty in 2022 by transferring a bunch of money that was just freshly printed by the Federal Reserve, which is now causing prices to rise, because that's what happens when you transfer money out of nothing. So what was the IMF saying in 2007 on the eve of the financial crisis? They were much more positive back then than they are now in this little missive of Article 4 in 2023. Here we go, 2007, June 22nd, 2007, Article 4, Constitution with the United States of America, concluding statement of the IMF mission. We share the U.S. authorities' view that the most likely scenario is a soft landing as growth recovers and inflation falls, although both are subject to risks. Activity should pick up as the drag from housing dissipates, business investment recovers, and higher foreign growth supports net exports. This yields a baseline of 2% annual GDP growth in 2007, rising to 2 and 3 quarters percent in 2008. Our current monetary policy settings are consistent with the soft landing. <laughs> In conclusion, says the IMF in 2007, the U.S. economy continues to show remarkable dynamism. The slim lady over you knew is dead. Now I'm a big fat dynamo. And resilience. But important challenges lie ahead. Let's see what they were saying in July 2008 right before everything collapsed. A 2008 Article 4 Constellation with the United States of America concluding statement of the IMF mission. This is June 19th, 2008. The slowdown in activity in the United States has been less than feared. <laughs> Ooh, that's great. And recovery should begin next year as important headwinds are overcome. Well, they were right about the recovery, but they weren't right about the slowdown uh, being less than feared. Yeah, not so much. As such, we project that real GDP for Q4 of 2008 will be roughly flat in 2008 and recover gradually in 2009 to around 2%. Well, we know the actual recession was much more severe than that. And here's their conclusion for June 2008. Conclusion, U.S. authorities are to be congratulated. Congratulated. You did it. Congratulations. Great job, everybody. It's great to meet you. Hi. On their rapid and innovative responses to a complex crisis, which basically included printing a whole bunch of money. And now where was the IMF in 2009 after they realized that they'd screwed everything up? Let's uh, take a look. 2009, Article 4, Constitution of the United States of America, including statement of the IMF mission. First, a mea culpa by the IMF. The U.S. financial and economic crisis has had severe global repercussions. The run-up to the crisis involved a substantial and widespread underestimation of risks, especially in housing, and growing leverage and liquidity mismatches, in particular through off-balance sheet vehicles and non-bank entities in less regulated areas. The sharp decline in housing prices that started in 2007, which we said would be fine and not a problem, weakened several systemically important financial institutions, culminating in the collapse of Lehman Brothers and revealing major weaknesses in the U.S. regulatory and resolution frameworks. This was followed by the worst global financial panic since the Great Depression, with extreme strains in a broad range of markets, volatility in capital flows, and exchange rates, and a cascade of systemic events. And the truth shall set you free! And so we see here, relative to the mea culpa of 2009, the 2007 and 2008 Article 4 conclusion whatevers were pretty positive, rose-colored, and uppity compared to the one for 2023, which has a lot of worrying tones in it about banking crises. The IMF knows that something big is coming and they are worried, though they are lowballing their estimates on consumer price inflation and what they call GDP growth, which is just, you know, corresponding to money printing. They know something is coming. They are worried, particularly about treasury market functionality. And we have a tentative debt ceiling deal, which will probably be passed this week. And following that, we will have about $1 trillion of treasury bills dumped on the market in short order, which should suck out a $1 trillion more in deposits from the banking system. And that could bring money supply back down to where it would be had the COVID printing never happened. All this is going to lead 
to a stunning reversal by the Federal Reserve, which will cut rates right back down to zero or possibly even nominally negative, depending on how bad the crisis gets. And from there, we will see the final death of the dollar, along with all fiat currencies that are currently based on the dollar through the skeletal remaining structure of the Bretton Woods system that ended in 1971. But the scaffolding of that system still exists. And that scaffolding is what has to fall for gold and silver to take their rightful place as money directly once again and end the inflationary nightmare inflationary in so many aspects, not just monetary, but academically, medically, and all the other aspects of society that are clearly poisoned these days. It is all coming to a glorious, spectacular, and hyper-inflationary end. And if the IMF is worried about it, that's good news. This is Rafi with The Endgame Investor. If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe to a two-week free trial of the Endgame Investor, where I give you a front row seat to the Endgame as it unfolds on a daily basis. Or you can become my patron on Patreon, where I give a weekly biblical commentary on monetary and economic policy topics. And of course, you can support this channel by buying your gold and silver, your physical gold and silver with Miles Franklin by calling 855-GAME-END. And I'll see you guys in a few days. And thank you, IMF, for being so brutally honest.